host on The Power of Money, and I'm honored to have you as a part of my world in this coming segment. With The Power of Money, as you know, we are interested in three things. First, that you get the necessary education so that you and your family will have the information to do well in these difficult times. The second thing I'm interested in is for you to be empowered to prosper. I want only the best for you, but you can't get that if you don't have the education and then the drive to make it happen. And the final thing, and perhaps the most important thing, is that you be energized because life is more than a journey. Life is about living. And so I want you to learn these things and to be empowered and encouraged and energized. I'm Michelle Grace. We go. And welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves. And as always, I'm delighted to be in your world for the next hour. And um, we've got some good things I want to share with you as always. Uh, we are ending 2021 shortly. Cannot believe this year has zoomed by again. And here we are again. Uh, me, still committed to giving you information, resources, insights, people that can help you and your family to thrive during these very, very difficult times. And I will say, the times are difficult. And that's what I thought I would talk about today as a basis of information to give you hope. Because at some point, the United States and the world is coming out of this. Now, I'm not prepared to say if it's like a train and the deer and the, what's it, there's deer in there, the, it's a deer. I don't know why I'm thinking about deers because I'm fighting deers in my yard right now. They, they befriended me and I didn't ask to be their friend. <laughs> what? Anyway, uh, no deer in the headlight. This is real talk right now. And that is, um, we are fast approaching uh, the year end. There are some things that are happening in our economy that despite your getting these stimulus checks and all this other stuff, as I tell folks, a printing machine uh, is just that. It's a printing machine. It's not a guarantee. It's a printing machine. Um, we are facing some really, really tough days. Now, I speak to you in a capacity as a financial professional uh, specializing again in the state work and uh, Medicare, Medicaid, um, everything happening for people that are over 50. You know, I don't, the young people, I can't do anything about that right now. You guys got to just hunker down and find your tribe, stay intentional about what you want, and then run like your life depended upon it. And when I say run, run to your goal. Okay, don't be all over the place. Focus on what your goal is and then get it. Period. Get it. Uh, lay, make sure the plans are mapped out per, per, uh, personally and professionally. And be willing to ask for advice and ask for help. Um, right now, with technology being what it is and advancing as quickly as it is advancing, um, there's a lot of opportunity that presents itself for those who are creative thinkers, who are uh, really, really focused about where they have to be. Uh, but there's going to be a huge number of people that are clueless. Now, for those of you that are clueless, you don't need to be listening to this show. I mean, really, because I'm not clueless at all. I couldn't survive in my arena if I was ambivalent about the times and the seasons. One of the things I had predicted many years ago is that were the explorers off base when they said the world was round and not flat. And my position was and remains that thanks to technology, the world is flat, which means that you can look at something 3,000 miles on the other end of the earth in real time right now thanks to technology. Okay, we saw that with Afghanistan. We saw that with 9-11. We have been looking at things real time for some time. But now the reality of what that means is upon us. Drones are here. Initially, it was a fantasy, but it's not a fantasy anymore. 
Drones are being used to fight wars. Drones are being used for military defense. Drones are going to be used in a minute for monitoring your home, meaning you have a drone, a drone whose sole purpose is to make sure everything is secure, kind of like a bodyguard in the air. So again, technology has upended everything. Internet has facilitated its speed along with the satellites, which are conductors. And people are taking flights into space, like the Jetsons and other people. And what does all this mean? Well, it means that with so much going on, you would think that our society was advancing. But sorrowfully, it's not. Because juxtaposed against this is climate change. Uh, excuse me. Whether you believe it or not, it is here. It's been coming. Al Gore talked about it years ago. People poo-pooed him off. Politicians poo-pooed him off. And scientists have been consistent in saying, if you don't cut this stuff off, if you don't cut it out, we're going to be in trouble. So now here we are. We got a black swan. A black swan, uh, a swan is something you hadn't predicted shows up and upends everything. And in this particular situation, COVID, which, which scientists have been talking about, you know, animals transferring diseases, um, not a new thing, deer carry Lyme's disease, a tick that'll tear you up for life, and other things, uh, lambs and sheep carry syphilis, which will tear you up for life, and other things. But this was global in its impact, and it was fairly quick. It didn't waste a lot of time. It really didn't. When you think about, uh, it was kind of like London Bridge is falling down, plop, plop, all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty together again, talking about Humpty Dumpty when he fell off the wall. Very interesting. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. And that's what I feel, and many of you feel it as well. That's why stress and anxiety is where it is, because we are now recognizing the good is that we are now recognizing that we need each other. The bad is we're now recognizing that we need each other. And some of the people that you have various opinions about are going to be necessary for you to transit into this next piece because the United States is quickly moving into an arena called stagflation. Look it up, Google it, S-T-A-G-F-L-A-T-I-O-N. It's a term coined by economists all over the world when the economy begins to grind to a slow and painful halt because of stagnation, meaning you've got all these people that cannot get jobs, don't want jobs in many cases. I don't know how you're going to eat, but the underground economy is thriving. So people are managing. And inflation, which means that the price of goods is going to be rising rapidly. Well, you combine those two, and it puts a country in a very, very vulnerable position in terms of its economic growth and resources. Now, let me just share with you, because my credentialing is in uh, economics and biochemistry. I know it's weird, but it's me. What do you want? Anyway, <laughs> I'm just laughing. In economics, we learn under the capitalist mode of production, of which this country is, <coughs> and also we've got lots of company, including China. You can't, China's a capitalistic country. It's just a communist political expression. Our expression is um, capitalism and democracy, which is duly elected politicians, okay? Russia is none of the above. They don't care. They, they're communists. They run it the way they want. You don't like it, boom, watch. Okay? 
And people are thriving in all three systems. That's why I don't get into the politics of any of them, because all of them are making money, except things have changed. And when I say things have changed, at the point we are now in this country's history where we can't get what we want. We can't. A Christmas is coming. That's going to be interesting. Since most of our goods come from China, if you don't do your Christmas shopping before Halloween of this year, you may find yourself, particularly with the children, facing some tough times. Why? Because just about 99% of all of the toys come from China, and China's not shipping a lot. Why? Because they, they're taking care of their own people. Okay? They, they really are doing that. What's the impact on us? Well, Johnny doesn't get his favorite squirt gun. Sally doesn't get her favorite doll. You don't get that gorgeous uh, car you wanted because they don't have the chip. All this kind of stuff that would have been unheard of, okay? And now we have, again, this issue of stagnation, which is companies want workers, but workers don't want companies. And it doesn't matter whether you cut off the unemployment or you make it more difficult to meet their bills. They're willing to go that road. It's an amazing, it's an amazing anomaly. Amazing. I never thought I'd live to see something where people didn't work and didn't care. And then I realized, but there's an underground economy. What's an underground economy? Well, in most nations of the world, they have thriving underground economies because that's where business is done. People provide services off the books. People provide um, cook meals, do all kinds of stuff. They just straight out hustle to make money, babysit, swap, everything. Before money, it's called bartering, and bartering is essential for the underground economy. I believe that a ton of young people are doing this right now. Why? You can run ads on Facebook, you can run ads on YouTube and be paid. You can get paid for making these uh, commercials and for documenting and all that kind of stuff. You can get a check. You can do an amazing ad on TikTok and you can get paid because advertisers are not broke. We are as American consumers, but we've got a generation of extremely resilient young people and they're making it work. And I'm telling you, they produce some good stuff. I, I watch Instagram. I watch TikTok, I watch Facebook, I watch these venues, and, and the stuff is so funny. The stuff is so funny. I mean, the stuff they do is so funny that advertisers are paying them. They get a certain number of views. Same thing with music. You don't go to a concert, you go to, to the, um, you come, go to your internet, okay? Of course, you have television systems home on theaters that facilitate this easily at home. Uh, you've eliminated that need to go into a workplace. Thanks to the virus, people can do their work at home. Uh, if, if the manager is unhappy about it, then he can look for another job. I mean, this is all of this stuff that's kind of gone flip-flop, and here we are. But that underground economy, while it does facilitate flourishing for a lot of creative people, it does not facilitate aggregate, which is total economic growth for a country. The country needs to have people that are documented as working in environments such as manufacturing, retail, etc., that would mandate it. Well, as anybody will tell you, you go to the store today, the big box stores, and you go to Dollar Tree, and I bet you'll see where everybody's shopping. I'm just being open with you. I'm not trying to cause any waves. Just open up your eyes, tear off the scales. Well, how are they able to afford? Well, because they have swap parties, and they swap their clothes with each other. Okay? That's what they do. Or they do this. or that. They're creative in their survival. 
My prediction is that they will survive. This is an emerging tribe, an emerging system, a survival where people that are creative and entrepreneurial and, and, and ingenious will do fine. People that do business as usual will not. One of the most startling statistics that's out here is the number of people that just simply don't watch television anymore. They don't watch television, period. They have a smartphone, or they have an iPad, or they have an Android, and they do most of their interface through those venues. They talk to each other, uh, they chit-chat, they text, they share information, and things get done. Let me give you a case in point. I am relaunching my company that I parked about five years ago. That was Shayology Organics, which was a part of my philanthropic feelings about women and children in West Africa and Shea Butter. And my site maintenance and developers charge me $99 a month. That's compared to years gone by where website maintenance and development was close to 500 a month, there's been a shift. And the shift is these are all young people. And they are, you know, they're like, wait a minute, we got the technology, we know how to do this, and we're going to really, really up your website. And they have. You can look at it. Go to Shayology.com. This is all young people. They called all that stuff from years past fast forwarded it, and are taking me to the next step. Now you say to yourself, huh, well what does that pretend for everyone else? Well this is what it pretends. Think outside the box and live. I'm telling you about stag stagflation because even the Federal Reserve is going to have to acknowledge that inflation is out of control. Yeah, it is. And that everything, don't, don't, don't be a meat eater. I'm not a meat eater, but I will tell you, a meat eater was telling me yesterday, he said, I went to, to buy three ribeye steaks to grill out, and he said, I almost, <coughs> excuse me, he said, I almost had a seizure at the meat counter. He said, the ribeye didn't look that great, it was like $17 a pound. What happened? I said to him, hint, hint, you better grow yourself some cows if you're going to keep eating meat and, and come and, and research slaughterhouses and figure out how to do this to make sure you and your family continue to enjoy steaks. He said, but who wants to do that? I said, people that understand the times and the seasons, unless you want to just give that kind of money away. I said, for starters, is expensive transporting, transporting this stuff to a store. I said, truckers are not plentiful today. A lot of them have retired. A lot of the young ones do as they, fit, they wish. And so it's trying to get the product to an end user, yourself. And you're going to pay for that. You want that, you're going to pay for it. In fact, in the grocery store, you're going to pay for everything because things are definitely higher. Really, fruits and vegetables, higher. How do you circumvent that? Get a pot, some dirt, and a worm, and grow your own. I'm serious. Plants and vegetables are generous. I'm just telling you, in my own yard, I had a um, miniature eggplant that I was just using for decorative. And the chipmunks ate it, or ate some of it, and dug up. My yard is full of eggplants. I've had to cut them back and just everywhere from the chipmunks. And I said, how can I hmm, train these chipmunks to be more efficient? <laughs> it's like I, chipmunks get on my nerves. But it did tell me how easy it is to move into a self-survival mode with something as basic as an eggplant. Uh, I'm a serious gardener for those of you that know me 
and I've been saying this for years, you better learn how to grow your own stuff, and thank God it's easy. It really is. It's easy. You can grow your own herbs. You can grow anything. You can get involved with cooperatives to survive. Now, let's talk about another thing relative to stagnation. And other than the fact that people don't want to work, don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. They don't want to work. But let's deal with the reality of that has a very real impact on economic growth and who is working. Well, I will tell you, the immigrants aren't playing about working. They are entrepreneurial by training. They know how to get out and make it happen. So the skills that they had to develop in their countries to feed their families, um, Americans got lazy. And so as a result, they're willing to do what you didn't want to do pretty cheap, really pretty cheap. And as long as the money flows to them, they don't really care because they pay everything cash anyway. Really, they, they absolutely do. So how do you change that? Well, as I said earlier with housing, we know that housing is going to be a problem for a long time. Going back to 2008, when we had the great, they won't call it depression, but it was, and housing stopped, came to a screeching halt. Banks weren't financing, people weren't uh, working, and builders shut it down. So we have a scarcity of housing stock right now period, which is why prices are going up for housing very, very, I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable prices in cities as well as suburbs, the housing industry because of the shortage. Now, builders are building, but they're not building the way they did in times past, and they're only uh, segmenting certain groups of people. Seniors are considered an excellent target to build. Why? Because they have money. Young people less so, well they can rent. Well, guess what? Rent is out of control. And so young people are saying, well, if it costs me uh, $1,500 or $2,000, we'll just split it between four people. They're already doing it in California, but this model of five people paying $400 a month, which is $2,000 for the rent, plus they spend, this was unheard of. Now we had rooming houses, that's a depression error behavior, but now we have actual property rentals that young people can rent a home and they split it five ways. One person sleeps in the basement or two people sleep in the basement and three people sleep on the main floor. And since they don't spend a lot of money on clothing, uh, they're able to make that work. How long will it last? Um, I don't know. I, I don't, but I do know that's working, and it started in California because rents out there were through the roof, but you found young people becoming their own little tribes. I mean, isn't that where Friends, the, the TV show, Friends, and all that, all this clustering because the rent was prohibitive, but split among people, it was affordable. Now, this is not a new thing. Actually, most of the world lives like that. Rent is high globally, except in China, which is communist, and they subsidize. You don't pay rent in China. You don't. It's all about property availability, and um, that's how that works there. But for the rest of us, this issue of rent catching up is real. The issue of housing being expensive and going higher is real. And what is the outcome of that? Well, I've had a lot of seniors say to me, well, I'm going to sell my house and move to an apartment. I said, you need to fix your house and stay put because it's going to be a long, long story. And you cannot rent affordably having sold your house. Where are you going to move when you sell your house? Okay? Now, there are some options. You can always consider a reverse mortgage purchase. They have a wonderful plan for seniors who want to take the money from a sale and have a house built and talk to a builder about that. But again, for most of America, they are going to be confronting 
everything going higher. And, and seniors, let me give you a little buzz here while we're talking about inflation. As those property values in your neighborhood have skyrocketed, guess what's getting ready to happen next? Your taxes are going to go through the roof because the valuation has now changed. And if you're crying now, and I'm not talking about those of you eligible for homestead, that's income driven, but for those of you that are just out here, retired, thought you had a good cash flow coming in from investments and dividends and rental property, you're going to see your real estate taxes double. Double. So that's called inflation. <laughs> I don't care how you put it. It's called inflation. You're going to find that your car repair costs are getting ready to skyrocket because the parts are going to be so much more expensive and they have to make their margins as well. So you're going to see overall, because of the shift in the economy and the things that are going on, you're going to see prices go higher. So what do you do? What is the answer? Oh, by the way, and I predict, and I'm not a gambling woman, but I'm right. I believe the stock market is getting ready to blow. I do. Um, we had some shakings the other day, but I'm saying because the stock market is tied into global activity, investors are from all over the world with money. And what I would strongly urge all of you that are seniors living on um, assets that are distributing, that you take a hard look at your advisor's credentialing, not for helping you to make money, because th th you know that. They've done that. Great time. But now you've got to live on that money and not run out of money, okay? That's real. You've got to live on that money and not run out of money. In addition to which, in addition, I just throw it out here, there are some other expenses that you probably haven't anticipated that are real. One of them is that you better get long-term care insurance. Why? Because if you have to go into a facility for any kind of care, okay, and it's nice to say, well, I got my wife or I got my husband, don't count on it. They can't lift you up. They got back problems. They can't drive you. Their eyesight is failing. This is a reality. And so that's additional money you're going to have to put aside and budget or else you're going to wind up bleeding yourself out dry. Right. I've seen it happen. I'm not laughing about it. Inflation is the most brutal form of financial stripping that is out here. Economists dread it because literally the bread that you asked in Germany, the bread you paid $2 for is now $6. The next day, like, wait a minute. I said, do you know how to bake bread? Because that may be the answer. Or do you know how to do this? Or do, do you know how to do that? And so here we are. Stagflation. My absolute prediction, I wish I was wrong, is that it's going to rear its ugly head in real time in 2021 year end and that it doesn't matter what a politician says. A country cannot thrive if it's not working. It cannot thrive if prices are gone through the roof. And I'm not saying that the prices going through the roof is wrong from a capitalist vantage point. But I am saying to you, as a country that's trying to get back on its feet, something has to be done. And don't look to me. Don't look to me. I'm taking care of me and mine. I hope you're taking care of you and yours. But something has to be done. We can take, let me give you a case in point. This is where technology and advancement comes in. I read and posted an article from a young woman engineer in Kenya who is converting um, plastic into building bricks that's more sturdy than true concrete and cement. 
And she's using this, because this plastic is plentiful, to build houses in their, her very poor country. I sent her an email and said, don't forget about us, <laughs> because we need that. We need housing for people that can't afford to pay rent. Nominal, just nominal, not a lot, but we need that. And we need other things as well. I mean, the fact that you don't need a four bedroom home to live well, the tiny houses, which is a big movement. People are living alternative ways to survive. They're not saying I've got to move into an apartment with unaffordable rent. I've got to look at some alternatives be willing to work with people that can offer you alternatives and live, okay? Children are not necessarily going to be going to school. I mean, thanks to this virus and the fact that it's impacting on little people means that we're going back to remote learning, which is really not a friendly way to learn. However, it beats a child being sick. So. Again, I'm putting all this in perspective because stagflation is the bottom of the pit. It's, it's, it's the bottom of the pit. A country's not moving. It's just in survival mode. It's printed up all this money. Everybody spent the money. And I've had people say, well, they should have saved that stimulus money for their rent. They knew they were going to have to pay rent. Excuse me. America was birthed out of the wild, wild west. You don't believe me? Look at Texas. Don't talk to me about what people are supposed to do when people are going to take it when they get it and deal with it when it comes. And that's where we are right now. They took the money. They used it for food. They used it for uh, necessities with children. And, um, and they don't have any. They don't have any. So what are you going to do? Have them sleeping under a bridge? Millions of people? No. Out of this chaos is an opportunity to literally take advantage of technology and recycle all this garbage plastic and build housing. Who's going to underwrite it? The government's going to underwrite it. Why? Because they print money. <laughs> I'm just being funny. But if you print money, you're going to the big house called the penitentiary. But they can print money. So if they're going to print money, print it to be useful for the citizenry. Because they're going to need housing. Your children are going to need housing. And we're going to need computer, computer platforms so that people can learn and improve their life. Now, I am extremely, despite all of the gloom and doom, because that's traditional. That's the traditional model. But we're now emerging into something very different where you've got all kinds of people living over in the United States now. This is a multiracial culture. Whether you like it or not doesn't matter. This is where we are and this is only going to intensify. You know the stats that Census Bureau said for the first time in recorded history. In first time in recorded history. The population of white people in America has fallen. And who's replacing it? Well, you've got all of your South American immigrants. You've got immigrants from all over the world, Asia, Europe. Um, they're coming from everywhere, Africa, Arab countries. They're coming, and they're not coming here stupid. They're coming here with skills. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket science to see the medical industry has certainly made a change. I mean, for real. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, your doctor would not have been um, Indian, from India. They wouldn't have been. But they're coming here, English trained, very credentialed, know their stuff, and that's just the way it is. So. Why am I saying stagflation, the bottom of the pot? Because when you're down here, the only way you can go is up, up. And things will have to change. 
And I talked about change in the past, but do you need your car other than for essentials? And is Uber and Lyft a better alternative? Do you pull all your resources and go shopping for everybody in the area? You're the point person to go grocery shopping this week. Do you use free delivery? And are you okay with the fact that other people are touching your food? Does it matter? But it's free in many cases and it's cheap in others. Look at Walmart, look at Kroger's, and look at Amazon. Jeez, my goodness, it's out here. They need to go in the taxi business, they're everywhere. But my point in saying all of this is that when you hit bottom, the only way to go is up and recognize that a lot of people are going to choose to go up. They are not going to be starving. They are not going to be homeless. They may have to go through some discomforts, but they are not going to be losers, okay? So don't get, don't get paranoid, don't get crazy, because the futurists have pretty much predicted this anyway. There's an awesome woman called Faith Popcorn, and I was an admirer of hers. She's a futurist. He talked about the, the pull toward veganism and organic and uh, 30 years ago. She's right there, cutting edge, New York girl. Dyed her hair 30 years ago, flaming red. Yeah! Okay, so she was ahead of the curve. But I only say this because out of the ruins, you will always have life. The fires that are burning down out of those trees, when everything settles down, life is going to emerge. Why? Because that is the cycle of life. That's how it works. Inside of that burnt, charred dirt are seeds from the trees. And they're going to sprout. And you're going to have more trees, okay? So what do humans do when confronted with, you're not at the bottom, I just told you it's coming. So what do you do? Well, you sit down with your family, and I say family because it starts with your immediate blood family, but if not, you can create your own tribe of family that have a vested interest in making sure everybody gets along. And then work out a plan. And recognize that it's not about you, it's about the tribe, the group, everybody that's riding the same ship, everybody that's on the same boat, and setting up systems that'll work for you. I am so excited, and I'm going to tell you why, because right after World War II, Russia was decimated. The Germans tore them up. Now, mind you, they fought, but the Germans tore those people up. Tore them up. Tore them up. Those people began to grow their own plots. They began to work together as communities. And Russia is uh, diverse. They've got all kinds of people over there from different ethnic uh, nationalities. And they began to pull it together and to get through it and to survive. And um, you know what? It's easier to do things in numbers than to do it by yourself. We learn that the hard way with isolation. Isolation is no fun. It isn't. We desire human involvement and human engagement, and we should because that is our core nature, okay? Now, I'm sorry if your life turned you against people, but I'm not against people because I know that humans are just that. They're not perfect, they're humans. And they're going to flounder and they're going to mess up, but they'll eventually cycle around to, can you help me? And of course you say, of course. Uh, in fact, on the subject of people coalescing together, I'm in two cooperatives where you grow stuff. And it's a diverse group. We've got people from all over that work their plot and grow stuff. And we're required to keep the plot it's a large, large, large acreage that is um, owned by the Catholic Church. And I'm not Catholic, but I do grow stuff. And so I'm a part of that cooperative. Well, on cleanup time, you get to really see how it works. 
because everybody volunteers to help everybody else clean their areas so that we can get through sooner. One person doesn't just doesn't clean up their plot and then leaves. I mean, because everybody else needs help too. And one of the things I watch, and I watch with great joy, is how everybody worked together to get our crops uh, done, finished for the, for the season, um, and prepare for winter crops and the, the, the camaraderie. So what am I saying to you again? Back to my initial premise, which is stagflation, the bottom of the barrel, boom. I don't care what the Fed says, okay? I don't care what your local politician has to say, okay? What I care about is that you put on your thinking cap and look at what you need to do to survive during this because there are many options. Remember, technology is here. The playing field is leveled, for real. You know what I thought about, and I don't have the smarts to do it, but I absolutely believe that doorbell ringing is going to be an outdated technology. Ding dong, you know, with the, seeing the person at the door. I think that if the drone technology can be miniaturized so that they look like um, little bees or something, and that that becomes your security system for your property, and you simply program it to watch your home and to alert you if something is off-centered. Now, the reason I thought about this is because I saw a television ad where people that are diabetic can put a little tab on their tummy and the, and the glucose level is monitored 24-7 and that information is sent, again, technology, to their cell phone. They can be across the country and get a signal about what their glucose numbers are looking like. Now, if they can do that for diabetes, some entrepreneur hear me well because I can't do it, but somebody can come up with a miniaturized drone and truly pr provide 24-hour security above your home and you will be protected in a more realistic way. You, the drone can show if it's a break-in, it, 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 it can do and show the whole thing. It can show everything because it's in the air. And the air is much more efficient than boots on the ground, so to speak. So I'm just saying to you, there are going to be many, many opportunities for people that are creative to do well during this. There are. Now, if you're going to go traditional, even with Bitcoin, Bitcoin's considered revolutionary, well, I'm like, how revolutionary is Bitcoin when J.P. Morgan and all your big honchos are involved? That's a traditional form of currency transaction, okay? It's just carrying a different title. You're going to pay tax on the money, et cetera, et cetera. But for really create, creative things that are going on, you got it. Inflation, that's a bad boy. That's bad. But the hope is, the hope is, that you will look at what we call alternative uses. How can I get to the grocery more efficiently? How can I do this more efficiently? How can I work with a group to get things done better? And for those of you that don't have that going on, then it's going to be tough. It really is. It's going to be tough. I know that um, a lot of things that we've taken advantage of and taken for granted would no longer be. If you think I'm kidding, go to the grocery store and look at the shelves. Really. And they will tell you, well, we can't get the item in or, you know, you know. And I will tell you, yeah, that's where it is for a long time and maybe forever. But how do people do it in the past? And looking at other models globally, not just here. Now, I will tell you right now, and I'm not trying to do a run on grocery stores and drug stores, but I would always say you need a plentiful supply of toilet tissue and paper towels. I found that out the hard way when I was in China because those are two items they did not have much of. Why? Because they create real problems in the sewer system. 
And um, they just didn't. Same thing for feminine items. They just didn't. So what should you do taking a clue from somebody else? You need to make sure you have adequate toiletries, paper towels, and feminine items. Okay? If you're older, depends. Those type of things as well. You just need to have them stockpiled. You need to take advantage of the low-end stores that are out here. Your family, uh, family general, family dollar, and Dollar Tree, all those, and look at what merchandise they're having. Many times, many companies sell through them because they can't get shelf space on the higher price stores. You will see product, you're like, how come that product's not at the store? Because for you to sell your product on the store shelves, there is a fee. You just don't put your store, the, the, store, uh, the, the grocery store is giving you access to a public. So you may look at alternative venues, including the farmer's market, okay? And I'm a big supporter of the farmer's market because that's food from the ground coming direct to you without a middleman. And you're feeding people because the farmers are able to make profit. Those things are popping up all over the place. They don't have to be fancy. They just have to be, period. And you have to know how to avail yourself of those things. I'm trying to get you to think a little differently, okay, because your survival and your family's survival will be dependent upon it. Now, the rich will always be okay. They can fly to the moon. They can fly to Mars. They can fly to Venus. They can fly anywhere because they have money, okay? How did they get the money? Well, under capitalist theory, you either work for it or you leverage it through investment. Most of that money is from investments. And what are investments? Stocks, bonds, etc. How did those things get money? From people like you who work to make those companies profitable so that they could sell stock. Yeah, it comes back to you again. You are the architect of your own destiny. But they are not going to uh, be impacted because they have wealth, except couple of things. I believe the politicians are going to tax the rich heavily. Uh, going back to Dwight D. Eisenhower's time in office when things were stable. And I believe that the politicians are going to eliminate a lot of the um, tax advantaged benefits that we have in the workplace. So I tell people be watchful, be careful. And another 25 years they say there will be no Social Security. I don't know if I'll be around but I do know that for a lot of young people, that's not something to be counting on. Look at what other alternatives you have before you that can make a difference in your life. Am I making it plain? I'm trying to make it plain because sometimes the academia side of it gets to be a little bit too much. Like, what the heck is she talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Be intentional. Be intentional about where you're headed and lay steps in place to get you there. Stop crying with the expectation that somebody is going to save you because it's not going to happen, okay? You got to save you and your family, which means laying out a plan, working with your neighborhood uh, if you can, and working with your family members if you can so that you can get through it. Um, there's going to be an awful lot of people out here who are going to be losing their homes and their places of abode in the next six months. They are. Now, investors are going to view it as a scoop-up opportunity, which means, oh, my God, they're going into foreclosure. I'll buy this house uh, for a little bit of nothing, flip it, and make money. And expect that, because that's what investors do. For apartments, can't afford to live in a two-bedroom with your children, maybe you can partner with somebody else and rent a house and do some things that'll make you cash, okay? I predict that this is gonna be an incredibly challenging time, but again, I think there's plenty of room for hope, okay? I'm not, I'm not a negative Nelly. I refuse to embrace that type of thought because as I think it, it'll come into my world. I don't want anything bad coming into my world because of my thoughts and what I'm saying. I'm simply sharing this with you so that you can lay the foundations to prepare for now. 
I would also say to you that if you are planning on growing um, your vegetables, that you need to be ordering that now because they're predicting a seed shortage. Right, they are. Farmers can't get enough seed. And so I'm saying to you that on your core vegetables, cabbage, kale, carrots, get that stuff now, okay? And get moving. You say, I I've never gardened before. Google or YouTube. My daughter told me YouTube has everything, Mom. And Google knows everything. That's her generation. But you know what? I think they're right. I, I, I found everything. I YouTube has been an incredible venue for me learning practical steps. And for many of you, it may be a lifesaver. So I want to challenge you to not be fearful, but to be hopeful, optimistic, recognizing this is a situation that's before you now that you must address. Do the things that will prepare you, okay? You don't have to be a survivor. There are groups that are literally already formed communities 15 years ago. But you can be what we call a late adapter. And you got it, and you're going to do the things that are necessary to survive. Now, the final thing I'm going to say on this subject of stagflation is whether you know it or not, water is getting ready to be an issue. For many, it already is. Colorado and Nevada and California. But I'm saying to you that water is going to be an issue. You cannot survive without water. You cannot, okay? There's areas of our country that don't have that issue, but there are other areas, and a growing number of them do, that do. The other thing is that I'm sure you know about plastic bottled water, which many people drink because they don't want to drink sink water. Well, reacquaint yourself with boiling your water and pulling, putting it in jugs that you can drink. Now, I'm not trying to sound um, like I'm just crazy, but I'm saying to you the ability to get plastic bottles is tight and going to get a lot tighter, a lot tighter. So don't throw away those bottles because you'll probably need them. And in fact, don't throw away much plastic, period, because that is definitely on the way out. The notion of plastic to just toss is not going to happen, okay, because it requires a certain resin for it to hold its shape, and that resin originates in China. So, you're not going to be able to get a lot of your plastic um, storage containers uh, for food, left all that's empty shelf, empty shelf, okay? These are things, now, how you can, before you ask yourself the question, how does she know these things? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I've been doing this a long time. And when I started doing this in college, and that's 50 years ago, people would say she is one of those hippie type girls. No, I wasn't. I was a scientist. I know that the law of supply and demand is real. And if you can't, if the demand exceeds the supply, then you have a problem with prices increasing. And again, with everybody home, demand is definitely exceeding a limited supply. So if you know this information, you can pretty much predict. I also have a habit of going into grocery stores, going into uh, department stores, not to buy stuff. I want to see activity and thrift stores. And I will tell you uh, what, has, what has been the most uh, disappointing thing with me on thrift stores is that they, it's expensive. And you know why it's expensive? Because the material that's used for those older clothes are not available today. So a dress is going to cost you at a thrift store anywhere from $17.99 to $23.99. I said, that's outrageous, until I understood that that's actually a bargain in comparison to what you pay at some of the other discount stores or regular retail stores, okay, for product that is not um, cotton and silk and wool, it's blends and 
polyester. Polyester, of course, is oil-based, okay? And so it may be a bargain. I just know that to see people spending that kind of money was just very disturbing to me. And I made a mental note that, hmm, are the thrift stores going to be the retail stores of the future where people donate, or are we going to do it more charitably and just swap with each other and make sure our kids have clothes and that you have shoes and this and that and the other? It has to work like that. It has to work like that or else we are really going to be in, into some, some difficult times. But I remain hopeful, I remain optimistic, and I believe in the incredible ingenuity of the human person. I believe in the incredible resilience of the American people. And I know we're going to get through this. It may not look like you think or like you want, but it doesn't matter in the end as long as you get to the finish line with all your body parts intact, including your mind. So on today's subject, stag stag stagflation and what this pretends, I'm Michelle Graves, the money lady, glad to be here today and glad to have you as a part of my learning and teaching experience. God bless you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.